and apologize. I, my Latvian is a little bit rusty, so I have to start uh, with English today. Uh, but you all you had your coffee, so let's try to do that. So um, I didn't understand too much about the presentations before, but I can see that there was this uh, topic of new mobility. Uh, and as you can see, I am extra for this uh, event. I went underwent an ACL surgery, so I'm in the rehabilitation, and I'm testing a new Garmin wearable, counting my steps and everything. So uh, let's see how that works today. So I, at least I know I'm in the right place uh, personally and, and with the Garmin. Um, I ha only have 10 minutes um, and then a time for qu some questions, so I most likely um, have to be very quick in, in some of the issues, but I will stay here. And I have my local colleague uh, here as well, so um, if there are any questions afterwards, uh, please come to me or Dmitris, uh, then we ha can have a chat. Um, but basically, um, Medical, medical technology, uh, pharmacy, and every, everything, it's, it, they are topics that, that have a sort of serious meaning. Uh, some of you might think of what is Garmin, a consumer electronics company, doing here. But that's something that I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about today. So, um, uh, my name is Juha Villanen, and um, I originally come from Finland, but I'm based in Munich, and my role is to um, of uh, to be a business development manager for Garmin Health in in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. I work a lot in the Nordic countries in Scandinavia. Uh, we are starting to get our, uh, our work done here in the Baltic states as well. Uh, but also, I work in, in uh, quite a lot in Middle East, uh, which are totally very different kind of environments in terms of health, medicine, and, and lifestyle. Whoops. Uh, quite briefly to Garmin. Um, 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 Garmin is a fairly traditional company already, and, and my mother, for instance, still uh, thinks that I'm doing something with satellite navigation. So Garmin started, is he heavily involved in navigation uh, and, and, and still is. But you can see uh, Garmin has five uh, business verticals. They are roughly the same size. Uh, automotive meaning the navigation systems for cars, uh, marine. Um, if you have a sailing boat, you might have a Garmin product in it. Um, outdoor, fitness and wellness, and aviation. So lots of them are navigation or sensor-driven businesses, and, and uh, the total revenues of the company are roughly 3.5 uh, billion US dollars, and, and Garmin has 12,000 employees. Uh, worldwide. But then, enough for Garmin. Um, Garmin Health is uh, within the business unit uh, fitness and wellness. Um, and and uh, what we do is basically we want to um, make the ecosystem, meaning the, um, the healthcare providers, corporate employers, uh, or digital platform providers, make it easy for them to use our wearables and sensors for their business. So that's what it means that we, we use our devices, ma mainly the wearables, um, and then different kinds of uh, interfaces to enable our partners to use them. So what do we do? Uh, or basically what do we uh, offer to our customers and, and partners is um, is, is, let's say, is almost 60% of that is employee engagement. That means corporate wellness. So corporate employers uh, starting to uh, invest in, in the health of their employers. Uh, there are different kinds of um, ways to that, and they are regionally very different. In Norway or in Dubai, they are totally different kinds of uh, topics, but more and more the employers uh, start to recognize that uh, the healthy employers are more effective and then you reduce the cost as well. Um, it typically starts with just, um, you know, uh, maybe your employers have been giving out um, tickets to fitness centers or organizing some sports events in the, in the, in the work, but then it, it goes more and more digital and then uh, suddenly also our, our wearables are part of that. 
Um, maybe in a lesser extent here, but quite a lot of our, especially Middle East, Asian, or Central European programs relate to health insurance or life insurance, or even pension insurance, where insurance companies, let's say, uh, uh, want to engage with them, their um, insurance policy uh, takers, and, uh, but also promote the health, and also know more about the health uh, situation of their, uh, their customers. Meaning that um, if, you, if you buy a life insurance, the life insurer most likely wants to know if you're healthy or not. And, and, uh, and, and one, one way to do it is, is to, to integrate our, our wearables to it. But again, this is very uh, health system related context. And in, for instance, in Scandinavia, you don't have much of that business. And, and, and in Latvia, it's also still evolving. But maybe the most relevant for this uh, today is, is healthcare and welfare. Uh, where I also include uh, pharmaceutical companies because uh, here we go quite close to the sort of traditional medicine uh, and, and healthcare. And, and that's for us, of course, as the, is the biggest, let's say, challenge to how to cope with that because our devices are not medical devices, they are consumer electronic devices. Uh, but I will show you a few examples of these, how these have been uh, or are, are um, used. And is this a pointer? No, you can't see it. But in the, in the watch, you can see that basically on top of the, the wearables we have, um, we have different kinds of I interfaces, meaning that uh, uh, interfaces enabling a, a, a third-party platform or app take data from our device, from the per person. Or then there are uh, specified apps that can be built in, the, in the, the watches. And that means that sort of the pharmaceutical company, insurance company, or the medical, um, digital, uh, me medical provider can access to the data of the person using it. So that's um, in brief what we uh, do. And I will have examples to these later. <coughs> Then to the ecosystem. How many of you, by the way, uh, have a Garmin wearable? Oh, that's a majority. Uh, how many of you have a wearable? Dimitris, you have to do something. It's a market share, so about 20% now. <laughs> uh, to the ecosystem of where we are, um, um, again, there are roughly, I don't know, more than 130 million wearables, meaning simple fitness bands or, or smart watches uh, in the world, and that's sort of growing very rapidly. Um, um, that's a few years ago, you had more of them for a very masculine, hardcore uh, marathon runner, but now you're going to have, uh, or having uh, for, let's say, elderly people, you have them for kids, and for fem female, more, uh, let's say, nicer looking models. As well. They are all having the same kind of a sort of uh, intelligence in them. They are measuring the heart rate, uh, heart rate variability, stress index, sleep, and all um, other things. That and then you can see that in the, in the picture, if you can see, sort of basically, it's very important in, in, in the Garmin health business that you can serve the sort of the whole population, not only the, only the sporty ones. Uh, um, and it's very easy that, that the people want to, uh, want to use them because otherwise or the healthcare ecosystem, they don't get the data they need for that. And I think this is the key issue if you compare medical devices and the consumer electronic devices. I still think that uh, it's good for the let's say, um, the population health in general, if, if we, we sort of exploit the success of, of, of these consumer wearables in the, in the prevention programs, for instance, or rehabilitation um, or health promotion programs. You, want, you, you need to want to wear them all the time. Um, then the, the ecosystem is, is a set, uh, the corporate employers have been the biggest part, but we are moving to the health stakeholders quite a lot. So either you have private um, healthcare providers, private hospitals, you have, you have public healthcare providers, and in some countries the healthcare stakeholder is a, is a health insurance company. So, um, and there it comes technical because Garmin doesn't, we only have our devices and, and some of the open interfaces to everyone. That's why we need uh, companies like Meditech here in, in, in Latvia who 
who work with those companies, uh, the providers in the country, and use the data and integrate our wearables into the system for the benefit of that. A uh, big part also is, is the, are the health and wellness apps on the smartphone. How many of you have, have that kind of a thing on your smartphone? How many of you are measuring steps or anything with your smartphone? Okay, that's more than the wearables. So, uh, and we, Garmin has 800 apps, so third-party apps, who are using our uh, data from our wearables. So the, the smartphone app you are having, they are sort of integrated with the wearable, so you can measure the steps with that. So this is growing very rapidly, and, and that's also interesting to see where those requests come from to us. So which kind of companies and startups and app uh, providers uh, uh, want to use the data from our wearables. One very interesting is the diabetes app apps that there are, I think, oh, there are more than 3,000 3, diabetes apps uh, available, and they are increasingly coming to us wanting to integrate the, the, the device data to their app because physical activity and sleep and even stress are relevant to, to everyone who having a diabetes. I have to speed up a little bit, but um, Coming back again to the healthcare uh, relevance of, of consumer electronics companies, uh, you know, everyone who knows in the medical, uh, maybe there are doctors here as well, no doctor is allowed to make a diagnosis based on, on a consumer electronics device as such. That's, that's clear. But uh, many times it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's more important to get the awareness of the patient uh, and make, make him learn about his or her own lifestyle and actions. And this is, I would say, the wearables are there for learning, for my learning. And um, I, I am a fairly sporty guy, but now with the, with the injury, I can't do anything. So I actually, I went back to the rehabilitation stage where I should actually follow my sleep uh, has been poor, and my stress levels are high, and I'm not moving at all, so I don't feel well. But I am sort of learning myself how to get back to that again. So actually, again, I am counting steps every day because I have to walk and mobilize my knee. So it's for my learning. But for the professional environment then, for the, for the doctor or any care person, it can be a coach um, or a other support person, they can also use the data sort of every time the person is not physically at your side then um, they can use the, the development of the heart rate or your physical activity and then do the other, other uh, medical research on that. Maybe I skip this, but these are just examples of, of our interfaces. So we have many kinds of things um, uh, that are easily used by, by uh, digital health providers and healthcare providers. Few examples now because the time is running. This is um, a most typical case uh, where uh, an in employee engagement provider, Welltech, it's uh, actually a Singapore-based company, they have an app and they sell it to corporate employees and insurance companies. And, and they sell their service with a Garmin device and then uh, they provide the, the an analytics for the, for the human resources or then the life insurance companies. So this is a most typical case using a, a standard application interface of us. We have 800 of these kind of companies. Uh, this is from Finland. This is from the corporate wellness side. This is occupational healthcare, where they actually is a private provider uh, of, of, of doctors, um, physiotherapists, psychologists, and different kinds of services. They have selected the Garmin device uh, to be the base of their, uh, their programs so that the doctors and physiotherapists can use and, and give indicators to their, let's say, the employees that are uh, encountered to that. But it's, it's a private healthcare provider. This is a case, um, this, it's, it's going more than this, let's say, um, even b telemedicine to Internet of Things, things where Basically, Garmin is providing the human interface. If all devices are connected to each other, uh, Garmin, IBM Watson has selected our uh, VivoSmart 3 to be the base product uh, for their worker safety programs, meaning that it, it actually sends an alert if, if the heart rate is falling or stress levels are getting high. So they are 
IBM Watson is connecting the human being with our devices into their sort of other, other uh, uh, programs. Very, very interesting case. And this is similar. Uh, one of the Volvo Ocean Race boats, the crew, they are sailing somewhere very far now. Um, the crew is using our Forerunner 935s and measuring the heart rate and heart rate variability and stress. Uh, and the SAP, almost like the IBM, they are then using that data on their own platform. And this is a pilot project where we are sort of trying to figure out the best possible mass uh, product um, uh, um, on, on the market. Um, summary, and time is, by the way, up. I will take a five seconds to that. But in, in the healthcare environment, the medical technology environment, consumer wearables are, you should use them because they are very popular um, and that, that the popularity will grow. Sensors are developing very quickly, the features are developing quickly, so healthcare ecosystem can use them, and that's quite a lot of easier than using only the medical devices. Um, and the second one is that we can't do anything alone. We always have two or three, let's say, partners in that ecosystem before one solution is ready. So that's why we are investing a lot in, in opening up the, the, our device and, and, the, and, the, and the data to third parties uh, in that system. Time's up. But remember, um, I will stay here as well. So come to me or Dimitris, who raises his hand here now my local Garmin partner here, so um, come to us if you have any, any questions to, 